Welcome to Real Physics. This is my second part of the debate with ChatGPT about the solar model, the liquid metallic hydrogen alternative offered by Pierre-Marie Rabitai. And well, I was a little bit disappointed by the first part. You should watch it, however, because he was very much rehashing the standard model argument. So yeah, my start to this debate was like this. I realize this is an uphill battle against all the training data that praise the standard model. However, I'd like to point your attention to a historic fact. The standard model was developed in the beginning of the 20th century when no reasonable alternative was in sight. This is crucial because once developed, a model is almost never given up. However, only in 1935, Wigner and Huntington proposed a metallic liquid state of hydrogen. If that was known earlier, solar physicists at the time would have considered this alternative more seriously. Because there is a ample evidence for a distinct surface of the Sun, which would be very natural in the liquid metallic hydrogen model, while it is a considerable stretch for the standard model. However, consider just the epistemological problem of a field of science forced to develop when the right path was still hidden. It's true that historical circumstances can shape which models get traction. And alternative ideas like the metallic liquid hydrogen model are intriguing from an epistemological perspective. However, while the standard solar model emerged under early constraints, its evolution has been driven by a wealth of independent observations, from helioseismology to neutrino fluxes, that continuously support its framework. The surface we observe is an optical effect from reaching optical depth unity, not a literal liquid surface. In short, while alternative models remind us to keep an open mind, the comprehensive multifaceted evidence currently mm -hmm. favors the standard picture over the liquid metallic hydrogen. The evidence you name has never been independent in the strict sense. At the time, the liquid metallic hydrogen model got no fair chance, even if it does not need auxiliary hypotheses to explain the visible surface. Regarding helioseismology, such acoustic waves appear much more naturally in condensed matter. Again, the standard model can postulate boundaries for a hypothetical solid body, but it is another miracle that these coincide with what is postulated as the illusion of the optical surface. Multiple lines of independent evidence support the standard model. For example, helioseismology measures pressure mode oscillations whose frequencies are well predicted by a compressible stratified plasma, not a condensed matter system and these oscillations naturally arise from the known equation of state of ionized hydrogen. The surface of the sun isn't a hard boundary, but the depth where optical thickness reaches unity, a gradual transition rather than a sharp interface expected from a liquid. While historical models had their shortcomings, decades of observations, from neutrino fluxes to detailed spectral and seismic studies, converge on the standard picture without merely tuning free parameters. With all respect, I do not believe you have a sufficient overview of how persistent prevailing paradigms have proved to be in the history of science. It is utterly impossible that additional evidence such as helioseismology overturns an existing model to which there is no alternative available. These waves could have been interpreted within the liquid metallic hydrogen model as well, but it has never been tried. The same holds for neutrino data, which had huge problems and discrepancies of their own. To try a fair comparison of the models, you should at least come up with some arguments that speak against the liquid metallic hydrogen model, not only reproduce the existing knowledge about the standard model. The liquid metallic hydrogen model faces significant challenges when confronted with solar observations and laboratory physics. First, the sun's photospheric temperature, around 6000 K, is far too high for hydrogen to exist in a condensed metallic state. The pressures and temperatures needed for metallic hydrogen, as seen in gas giants under extreme conditions, simply aren't present in the outer layers of the sun. Laboratory experiments on high pressure hydrogen indicate that while metallic phases might occur under extreme compression, mm -hmm. they lead to a plasma state under conditions akin to the solar surface, not a stable liquid layer. Mm -hmm. Second, helioseismic data, which probe the sun's interior, reveal smooth gradients in sound speed and density that align with a plasma model rather than the abrupt discontinuities one might expect from a condensed Aww. matter surface. The observed granulation, limb darkening, and spectral line profiles, all of which result from complex radiative transfer in an optically thick plasma, are naturally explained by the standard model. 
Moreover, phenomena like the solar neutrino flux and magnetic field interactions are consistent with energy production and dynamics in a hot ionized medium, not with a liquid metallic surface. Thus, while historical paradigms remind us to keep an open mind, the liquid metallic hydrogen hypothesis struggles to account for the robust, multifaceted evidence supporting the standard solar model he wanted to complete, I guess. As a sideline, liquid metallic hydrogen was not a historical paradigm, it was just discovered too late to be developed. If you consider metallic hydrogen as the theoroth element of the alkali group, and if you look at the boiling points of lithium, sodium, potassium and so on, a temperature of 6000 Kelvin is not unreasonable. It is true that you need much higher pressures and densities, but we don't have direct evidence of this. If you assume the photosphere being a state transition akin to a phase transition between the metallic and the molecular state of hydrogen, then structures like granulation appear quite naturally, reminding us from Benar convection. While your analogy to alkali metals is imaginative, laboratory and theoretical work indicate that metallic hydrogen requires pressures on the order of hundreds of gigapascals, okay. far exceeding the low pressures, 0 mm -hmm. 0.1 to 1 kilopecan, in the solar photosphere. The conditions necessary for a metallic phase simply aren't met at the sun's surface, where hydrogen exists as a partially ionized plasma rather than a condensed liquid. Moreover, Circle. solar granulation is well explained by convective processes in this plasma, driven by radiative cooling and buoyancy, rather than by a phase transition between metallic and molecular hydrogen. The physics of hydrogen under extreme compression is quite distinct from that of heavier alkali metals making it difficult to draw a direct analogy. Your argument about pressure is circular. The low densities make only sense if the plasma of the standard model is assumed. Such high pressures could well be achieved by a chromosphere consisting of liquid molecular hydrogen. By the way, the high resolution pictures of granulation pose a significant problem to the standard models, because the width of one pixel with good contrast corresponds to a much smaller lateral distance than the vertical column of several hundred kilometers in which its brightness is allegedly produced. A real surface and state transition explains much better the very detailed structures we see in the best telescopes. The idea that a low density chromosphere could harbor liquid molecular hydrogen conflicts with hydrogen's phase diagram at around 6000 K and the pressures measured in the solar photosphere far below the extreme conditions needed for metallic or liquid hydrogen, hydrogen exists in a supercritical gaseous state rather than a true liquid. Circular. Granulation is explained by convection in an optically thick plasma. Its lateral scales result from dynamic convective flows integrated over a vertical column of several hundred kilometers. High resolution images showing fine lateral structures do not imply a literal surface, but reflect the interplay of radiative transfer and buoyancy driven flows in a stratified medium. Again, you're confounding direct evidence with model assumptions, something for which, given your training, that I cannot even blame you. But maybe this needs a more general discussion. Regarding the pixels, let me try again, since the argument requires a bit of three-dimensional imagination. How should, in a highly turbulent region that extends several hundred kilometers vertically, should light be produced that forms patterns that laterally have a fantastic revolution of some 30 kilometers. That would require oddly formed needle-like regions that conspire to admit light consistently. The standard model explains this by showing that convective motions in the solar plasma create coherent horizontal flow patterns with scales of tens of kilometers, even if the vertical extent is several hundred kilometers. Detailed simulations of solar convection reveal that radiative transfer smooths and aligns these flows so the observed fine granulation is an emergent property of the turbulent yet organized convection rather than isolated needle-like emitters. Well, I think this is another good point to interrupt because I think that, well, at this point, these models indeed hit their limits because what you need here is real physical understanding and three-dimensional imagination to value, I think, the argument I gave and you can't just counterbalance this with all the knowledge you have learned from publications about the sun. If you like to explain these arguments more in detail, however, you might consider reading my book, The Liquid Sun. Of course, all the merit of having developed this model goes to Pierre-Marie Robitaille, an eminent scientist and the record holder for nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. 
I'm also happy to send you a PDF for free if you email me. So yeah, this discussion might be a little bit disappointing if you're a physicist, but on the other hand, to be fair, and if you're interested also in AI, which I am, I think after all, I mean, he puts the cards rather convincingly on the table and even a solar physicist might have problems to do that in a similar manner. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.